In today's video, we're going to be talking about banking on Sage Accounting. Good day, my name is Heinrich Rubia. I've been in the accounting industry since 2008 and I've been working on Sage many, many years. Um, first thing, remember that if you are maybe looking for a new accountant for your business, remember to go check out our website www.saaccountingnetwork.co.za. We've got a list of many different accountants all over South Africa that can assist you with all your business needs. Remember once again just to give the video a like, subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. Then just remember as well that if you guys do, are not signed up for Sage yet and you're looking to sign up for Sage, there's a link in the description of the video. Please use that link. There's a referral code on the link over there. So if you guys sign up through my videos, then I get some brownie points. It's the guys at Sage. So that's really cool. I really appreciate the guys who do sign up through my videos. And remember as well that I do, do give away for people who's got a paid Sage subscription. I give away a free half an hour consultation where I can answer any questions that you guys might have. The, all the details about those videos or those appointments is all shared in the video above. And then, um, yeah, let me jump down to my computer. Then I can show you guys exactly how to do the banking on Sage accounting. Right. So let's quickly just recap. So with the previous video, we looked at company. We did all the basic setup there under the company settings. We looked at customers, everything to do with customers. Customer suppliers over there now so the big one of here is the banking so first thing over here you can see that you've got the button over there that says and add a bank or credit card got the one that says the list of all the credit card you can see there's all the transactions that you're going to be doing the reports that you can have a look at and then over there at the bottom you've got the one that says special we're going to adjust credit card to bank account opening balances so let's maybe jump to the first one over there i think on this one i've already got one bank account over here so i'm just going to call this bank two so normally over here you would call this whatever you want to want to call it if you've got an fmb account or a main account or something like that you can name these accounts whatever you want it doesn't really matter just one interesting button you can see over there is the one that says active so if you're not using accounts anymore you can deactivate that account then it doesn't pop up on your selection or the other one that you've got is the default so what happens if you open up the bank screen then it will go to that account automatically you see i'm just going to hit save so you can just see what it looks like so normal under normal circumstances most businesses would have a check account and then obviously there will be a second one for a petty cash account so those are normally the two main accounts that you will find so if i go to my banking and you can see over here's my list of banking credit cards at the moment i've been using some information over here on the banking one itself that i was I'm just showing some people how to do stuff or on the other videos how the some basics of, of, of how to receive um, customer payments and how to make supplier payments so that's why there's a balance in there here's my second one so there's a princess i want to change this you can see over there and there's a little drop down and i maybe want to use the second one that i just created now and i want to make this my petty cash account so there's maybe this change the name <clears throat> so we're gonna say petty cash and then this one over here as well petty cash so now we've got our two bank accounts that we were talking about so you can see that is basically we have the list of all your bank account bank accounts over there now and the next screen so there's not really much to do under that screen so if you go to banking list there's a banking list list of bank credit cards banking credit card categories quick entry rules bank statement mapping rules we'll talk about that just now you can see over yes now where action starts happening you can see under your banking screen over here there's all the the stuff that normally happens so remember the little default button that i was talking about if it is ticked then it should open up under this screen over here automatically so now there's been some transactions that i did some in some of our previous videos so with sage there's basically three ways to get your transactions in here first one is if you captured mandate i'm going to show you quickly how to do it now second one is if you import a file from your internet banking so the, you would go into internet banking download a certain file and then you take that file and upload it back into sage and the third one is if you work with bank feeds so i'm just going to quickly touch on those three so if you had to do things manually <clears throat> then you can say over here that is a cash let's say for instance um you made a cash deposit now you can see over here it's a selection so you can select either to say that it is a account customer supplier or transfer so we'll talk about those different ones but the default the easiest way to work with sage is to keep it on account so let's say for instance we paid a telephone and then you can say over here that he paid a thousand bucks for your telephone account and that is basically how you would do it so if let's say for instance the second one 
where you say that we paid our accounting fees and we paid 500 bucks. So then if we just go through these list of years, so those are the normal type of expenses. You would just go through them, capture them straight from your bank statement as it's in front of you or from your petty cash records if you may be working in petty cash. Let's say for instance you want to pay a supplier. So remember I talked about under suppliers that you must not use the supply payment screen, use it from the screen of here. So let's just call the supplier, uh, supplier and we, so under selection of here, we can now go and say that we want to pay a supplier. We're going to choose our supplier. We're going to use this one over here. And we say that we want to pay a thousand rand to that supplier. Then just remember on this little fork over here, is the place where you allocate payments against specific supply invoices. So then you would just say that that thousand rand was from that specific supplier. If you go further down, let's maybe do a customer one as well. So if I say a customer and we say that it is a customer maybe that paid on an invoice then I would select customer over there I would select the customer from this drop down over here so that he paid 500 bucks and once again on that little fork over there is the place we can allocate it to a specific invoice <clears throat> so if he did work with the customer screen then over there you can allocate the deposit against that specific invoice if you're working with a cash business and we're not using invoices over here then you can say customer you can keep it on account and you'll see under your income you can see there's one that says other sales and you say 5,000 rand it depends on that was cash sales for the day and that is basically how you would enter the transactions manually into the system so just remember it's really really important that you must remember that you've got this drop down over here so if you're not working with customer invoices or supply invoices then you just keep it on account Put the money straight into 5,000 rand, it goes straight into that account. So you're actually skipping a couple of steps to get the money into the books, you see. So no, no customer invoices, just straight into your banking, the money ends up in, in the right place. If you do work with customer invoices, remember on the selection of yet, then you have to choose there whether it's a customer supplier transfer. And then, yeah, then you choose your customer, choose your supplier, put the amount, and just remember the little fork to do that allocation is really important. If you work with different accounts, let's say, for instance, this is a good example that we're basically working in our main account, and we decide that we're going to draw a thousand rand for our petty cash. Then you can say transfer. Now we can say over here that we want to transfer it into our petty cash account, and then we can say that we want to transfer a thousand rand into that account. It's safe changes. You'll see every time when you capture a transaction over here, you can see that your account balance at the top of the changes. So it's one way that it can keep track to make sure that you've got all the transactions in there. But if I now do the selection over here to say that I want to go to my petty cash account, then you can see, oh dear, I didn't put the amount in, I only put it under the reference. <clears throat> so let's quickly just go back to my bank one over here. Mm, oh, look at me, silly belly. There must be thousand rand in there. And now if I hit save changes, and then you can see that my balance is now minus 500 rand. If I go into my petty cash account, you can see over there we've got the thousand rand. So remember, this is the transfer that, that we captured out of the main bank account. So that's really, really important. Now, if you start working with bank feeds, let's maybe go back to this one over here. So if you look into internet banking and you decide that you want to start importing transactions, then you can see there's a little button that says import bank, bank statement. So you can see that they give you an option of a lot of different types of files that you can use. You can use your OFX file, CSV file, standard bank, CSV, net cash, historic CSV, so different ones. Easiest one to use is just go into internet banking, under your transactions, look for the OFX file, download that OFX file, and then just import that thing straight into this account. It's the easiest way to do it. The other ones, the CSV files works, but you must make sure that your format is right. If your date format is right, or the columns isn't right, or the headings isn't right, it just gives you errors the whole time. You'll see that they actually do give you um, examples of what a CSV file must look like. So if you had to do that one, you can see there's a button to say how to set up a CSV file. So here they give you the example of what needs to happen. You can see, you can view an example, you can download an example, but CSV files are really difficult. Just use OFX. So we're going to say browse. I've just went into one of my accounts. I'm going to go to my desktop quickly over here, and then I downloaded one, which is demo. So this is the one that we're going to use. 
So you got a couple of choices now. You can see that you want to import all transactions, or otherwise you can say that maybe just for a specific date, uh, maybe just want to have a look and see. Mm, I just can't remember how many transactions I've got, but let's say for instance from the 16th. And then you can see import file, and you can see over there three rows have been imported. Three rows unallocated need to be reviewed. So if you work with bank feeds, it looks exactly the same. Where are they? <clears throat> Let me just quickly just refresh the screen because now the transactions isn't there. <clears throat> just go back to my bank account once again. <clears throat> bank. So once you import those transactions, then you can see over there. Now I can see this is a good example. You can see <clears throat> that one over there was bank charges. So I can then go instead of unallocated, I say that, that that was bank charges. The second one, monthly account fee, once again, that was bank charges. Allocated straight to that. You can see, yes, a 9,000 rand that are transferred from one of my accounts. So now, let's say, for instance, it was a customer that paid, then I can say other sales, and I'll just pop it in there to say that that was 9,000 rand that came straight in. If I maybe did transfer it from a different account, I can say transfer. Let's say, for instance, I made a cash deposit into my business bank account, and I say petty cash to say where that 9,000 rand came from. So now I can say save changes, and that is basically what the, how the bank feeds work, how the, how the import works. You'll see that if you had to set up your bank feeds, it's working exactly the same. But now, instead of you having to go to your internet banking and download the files and manually upload it back into Sage and the possibility of duplicating transactions and stuff, Sage does that for you. So what you can do is if you go to banking and you go to transactions, you can see we looked at the banking one now. There you can see is the one that says manage bank feeds. So banking, transactions, manage bank feeds. Come on. And then this is the place where you can automate the system. So instead of you having to log into internet banking, downloading the stuff, importing it, you can go to say that you want to use this functionality over here, but obviously you have to accept the terms and conditions over there. Press continue, and then over here is the place where you can search for your bank, you can select your bank, and then just one thing that you must just keep in mind, it lists the main banks over here. You can see they've got apps up. FMB, Business Profile, Direct Feed, Standard Bank, Capitec, and NetBank. So if there's a bank that's not here, you have to actually search for it. And one thing for the FMB users, um, so the way that Sage, the bank feeds work, is that your bank logs into this and into the banking system, and then they call it scraping the account. So it fetches the transactions and then imports it into Sage itself. FMB is probably the only bank that's done it so far as they say no, that they don't like that system of Sage locking into your internet banking. They would rather prefer to send the data through to Sage. So the, the, the data flows the opposite direction. That is what this bank feed direct feed is. So instead of Sage going to fetch the transactions, FMB is sending it over to them. I haven't cracked the code yet, so I'm not 100% sure how that works. If you are an FMB customer, then go search for First National Bank. So if you had to say first, and you say search, you can see over there is the one that you can use for FMB. So what would happen then is after that, you hit the continue button, and we'll open up the screen over here, where you can put in your username and password, and then once you put your username and password in here, it normally takes a little while for the system to load. You can see there's your username and password, press the submit button, the screen after this, will show you that it, it locked in successfully, and then you just need to tell Sage for which bank account it is for. So I don't think I'll be able to access it now, but if you go to Manage Bank Feeds, then you'll see on the left-hand side, it will show the bank feed on the left-hand side, then on the right-hand side, you just got to tell it for which account it is for, whether it's for your main bank account or whether it's for your petty cash, whichever account it is for. But that system, if you log into your banking and you go to Transactions, Banking over there, then it will automatically be on the system over there. So instead of you having to go in, fetch the transactions, import it, or capture it manually, the transactions will already be there. A lot of our clients use that functionality and it works really, really well. You can see even at the top over there, they recommend that you set up their bank feeds just to automate that system over there. Yeah, so those are the three ways. Either capture it manually, Second thing, remember that you can download it from your internet banking, upload it into Sage. Third one is to set up the bank feeds. Those are the three options. Like I said, we prefer to work with the bank feeds. <clears throat> then you can see that it's got two tabs over here, the new transactions and the review transactions. So the main purpose of that is if you do that, then you can select the transactions. If, let's say, for instance, there's one or two that you're not 100% sure about, then you can say markers reviewed. So what it does, it moves the transactions from this screen over here 
over into that tab over there. So all your review transactions will be over here. So stuff that you know is in the right place, stuff that is unallocated that you're not sure about, it will still pop in on the screen over here. So you can always come back. So the idea is if your bank feeds are working, that you will only have new unallocated transactions here that you can then go and sort out. One thing that I don't like about Sage by default is, is on the screen over here, they only show eight rows at a time. So if you've got a lot of transactions, they've got like a hundred little tabs at the bottom of here with a lot of different transactions. Click on that little gear icon over there and then you can set the number of rows in your banking over here. So let's quickly see. See, there's the number of rows. So then you can change this. But you can see by default that it keeps it to a 20 and there it says eight. So we're going to change that to 50 and you can see a number of rows. We're going to say 50 and press save. So now it stops that problem of you only having to see eight rows at a time. You can see there it <coughs> said my preference has been saved. So there I can go back to the bank and say if I've got a lot of transactions, I'll be able to see 50 transactions at a time. Now the next thing is bank reconciliation. So remember that if your bank doesn't balance, then all your reports and everything is going to be out. So it's really, really important to make sure that your bank balances. They've got this functionality to say reconcile bank and credit cards. I personally am not too fond of that, that functionality of them. It's not that user friendly. But the one that we use at our office is this one that says report bank and credit card transactions. And now if you had to look at this report over here, that you can say that which bank you want to look at. And it depends if you want to look at this account and you say view report, then you can see over here it gives you a chronological order of what's happening in your account with your balances. So there you can see whether your bank actually balances. So this is the easiest way. So if something is there that's not supposed to be there, you can then just go in and fix that one over there. And then the other option that you've got over there well, just the other thing that I want to mention is opening balances. So if you want to add the opening balance in your bank account over here, you can go to special over there, adjust bank and credit card opening balances, and then you can put the opening balances into that account over there. Yeah, so I think that's just the last thing on banking. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember once again just to give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and keep an eye out for the next video. Thanks for watching.